Hi. Today I'm going to show you an interesting trick to reveal elements based on scroll interaction. As always, we are going to do this without any hard coding, using the help of the Pinegrow web editor and using Pinegrow Interactions, a green sock powered visual editor for web interactions. In this tutorial, I'm going to implement the reveal effect on a website menu. Basically, I'm going to create a floating menu, but only after scrolling the page for a few hundred pixels. This can be useful for a long page where you want to keep an element visible after scrolling past that element. Plus, the interaction makes it more appealing and catches the eye of the viewer. The end result of what we are going to achieve is that our menu should remain as it is when we scroll at first, but after scrolling down a little, our menu should reappear again. You can implement this on any page, but today I'm going to use one of the pre-built bootstrap templates, which you can easily select within the Pinegrow web editor when creating a new file or a project. If you wish, you can download the starter web page without the interactions and follow along with this tutorial. The link is provided in the video description. Let's get started. Open the starter project and begin building amazing interactions with the Pinegrow web editor. We're going to use a pre-built bootstrap template, so let's create a new file. Go to the file menu and click on new page. On the pop-up, you should find bootstrap with the other frameworks and their sample templates. Here, we're going to use a bootstrap four framework and select the blog.html template. Now our editor will load the page with the selected template. You can save the page here and when you save it, Pinegrow will ask to open it as a project, so click yes. This way you're not only able to access the page file, but also the whole project from the project panel. On this template, we have a big multi-section header. The top has the logo and subscribe button. The bottom block has the main links. To simply create a floating menu, we could apply position fixed to the whole element. But then, there will be an overly big block floating over the page content. So the best thing is to work on the lower menu block only. However, we cannot apply position fixed because it will create a gap when scrolling. The solution is to use interactions to make it remain static at first and after scrolling past the element, make it fixed or let's say floating. Our menu block has a class of nav-scroller, but for this example, I'll simply call it the menu block. While we already have a nice page layout, we have to add a little tweak for our interaction to work. The header and menu block are within a container block but we need those two blocks separated and the menu block with its own container so that when we apply position fixed, it will have the same spacing. Let's go to the tree panel. On the first container, select the header block and while pressing shift on your keyboard, select the nav-scroller block as well. Now drag them both out of the container block and place it above this existing container. Now let's add containers to these elements. Headers will be inside a container block, but for the menu block, the container block will be contained inside. On the tree panel, select header block and right click on it. A pop-up menu should appear. Go to insert. As we're using a bootstrap framework, you can see most of the bootstrap elements along with the other plain HTML elements. Under the Bootstrap section, go to Grid. Now hover over the container and you should see four icons, which will let you choose where you want your new element inserted. For this one, click on the first icon, which is the Insert Before. Now you should have a container block above the header block. Let's insert the header block into this new container block. In order to do this, just click and drag the header block over the container block, drag it a little to the right to indent it, and then release. Now let's add another container block to our menu block. Go to the tree panel, select the nav-scroller block, and right click on it. On the pop-up menu, go to insert. 
under the bootstrap section, go to grid, hover over the container and click on insert inside on the top, which is the third icon. We need our menu links inside the container block. So select the nav block and drag it inside the container block. Our layout is now done. Let's add our interaction. Let's add interactions to reveal and hide the menu on scroll. We need to add our interaction to the menu block and the page scroll is the trigger. So for this, we need to add a scroll scene interaction. We need to add this interaction to the parent of the menu block, which in this case is the body. Go to the tree panel, click on the body element. Go to the interactions panel, click on activate interactions. From the actions list, click on scroll scene. The scroll scene setting should appear. First, I'll work on the animation and work on the scroll scene setting to give you more of an idea about the implementation. On animation one, leave target blank. We'll set the target in the timeline editor as we will have multiple targets. Now click on the edit animation as we will create a custom animation. The timeline editor should appear. Go to the timeline editor and on the left, click on the selector. Go to div.nav-scroller and select nav-scroller on the pop-up. Now on the timeline editor on the right side, click in the blank space to create a new transition. Now click on the blue transition bar and edit transition pop-up should appear. Currently we are only adding some CSS properties. That is, we are only working on the appearance. So for the transition type, we are going to use set. For type, select set. On position, enter zero. Click on add property, go to not animated CSS. Select position. For position, select fixed. Again, click on add property, go to position and select top. For top, enter zero. Similarly, click on add property, go to position and select left. For left, enter zero. Now click on add property, go to dimension, select width. For width, enter 100%. Let's also add a Z index. Click on add property, go to position, select Z index. For Z index, enter 9,999. Now you should see our menu block floating over the page, but it has no background. So let's add a white background and a box shadow so it separates from the page's white background. Go to the same transition setting on the timeline editor, click on add property, go to background, and select background. For background, enter white. Now click on the add property, go to shadows and filter, select box shadow. For the box shadow, enter zero, two picks, three picks, hash EF EF EF. We already have a floating menu block now because this interaction is already triggered. You can check the scroll progress on the scroll scene settings, which now should be showing 50%. If you scroll, you can see this change. This is because start on has a value of enter selected. The scroll progress bar can be quite helpful while working on a scroll scene. Another helpful setting is show indicators. You can enter a label for the show indicators, which will help you to see the trigger position. Let's enter menu reveal, and now you can see three indicators. Start menu reveal is where the animation starts. By default, it is at the top and not actually visible right now. Trigger menu reveal is the point where the animation will start. If start on enter, trigger is at the bottom. If start on center, 
triggers at the center. And if start on is leave, the trigger is at the top. End menu reveal is where the animation will end. We need it to be triggered after we scroll down a few hundred pixels. Let's say 500 pix for this one. So let's work on the scroll scene settings to make it work. For duration, enter zero. For start on, select leave. And for offset, enter 500 pix. Now you should see the green indicator, so our animation should start when this green indicator scrolls past the trigger point, which is currently at the top. Still our interaction is not working as it should, so let's change that. Go to Animation 1, click on Advanced Options. For Play, select Independently. Another thing we should do is enable reverse in opposite direction. Now if you refresh the page and check, our menu block will remain normal as the page loads. But when we scroll past the scroll position, it appears again. Right now our menu appears quickly and doesn't look animated. So let's add a new transition to our animation. Go to Timeline Editor. Click on the purple Set Transition bar. Click Add New Property, go to Transform, and select Y. For Y, enter a value of negative 100%. Now add a new transition by clicking on the blank space inside the Timeline Editor. On the pop-up, keep the type as Tween. For Position, enter a value of zero. For duration, enter 0 0.2. Now click on Add Property, go to Transform, select Y. For Y, enter a value of 0%. Now scroll the page and check. Our menu should hide and reappear with a subtle transition. Our menu Reveal Interaction is done but you can see our page content jumps when the menu reappears. This is because the area covered by the menu block is removed from the layout as position fixed is applied. We can fix this by adding the same amount of space to the element below or on top. That is, we can add margin or padding to these elements. We can do this by manually calculating the height of the menu block, which is 52 picks with the margin. Now on the same Timeline Editor, on the left click on Add Timeline. Click on the selector. Now select the top div.container element, which is above the menu block. Now on the right side of the Timeline Editor, click on a blank space to create a new transition. Click on the blue transition bar to edit, and an edit transition pop-up should appear. For type, select set. On position, enter a value of zero. Click on add property, go to dimension, margin, and select bottom. For bottom, enter a value of 52 picks. Now check the page and you should get the same smooth menu reveal and the content doesn't jump. This shows just one method of how you can reveal a menu using a scroll interaction. You can hide or show any elements on the page with the same concept. You just have to work on the CSS and transition depending on your needs. This concludes our tutorial for making a menu reveal with PineGrow interactions. I hope the video was helpful. If you have any questions, please feel free to contact us via email or through the PineGrow forum. We will be coming up with more videos related to the PineGrow interactions and how-to videos for creating more interactive animations, so keep watching and following. Thank you for your time and we'll see you in the next video.